Welcome to this video in the communication series. This video is going to be looking at two dot points. The first being identify the role of receptors in detecting stimuli and explain that the response to a stimulus involves a number of things, including a stimulus, a receptor, a messenger, a factor, and a response. Hopefully, before we even go any further, you already know all of this terminology from the maintaining a balance topic when we looked at feedback loops. However, we need to go over it again in terms of communication this time. So a stimulus is a change in the internal or external environment of an organism. Living organisms pick up or receive stimuli using receptors. In their most simple form, receptors consist of single cells scattered over the body of an organism. However, in many organisms, receptors have become concentrated in particular areas to form sense organs, such as the eye and the ear. The sense organs contain non-sensory tissue aside from the special sensory tissue that can monitor stimuli. A response is a reaction in an organism or its tissues as a result of receiving stimuli. A pathway exists whereby a stimulus is detected, a message is carried to another part of the body by our nerves, and a response is triggered. For example, if you touch a hot stove plate with your finger, receptors in your skin detect the heat and pain causing you to withdraw your finger rapidly. The coordination of this action requires a link between the receptors that detect the stimulus and the effectors, which are either muscles or sometimes glands that respond to that change. And then we can see here that that sends a message back to the receptor to say that everything's good to go. And then we have uh, the stimulus is decreased and therefore the message no longer gets sent. This link or coordination is carried out by the nervous system, which is made up of our nerves, our brain, and our spinal cord of the body. And the response that we see in the stimulus response pathway is related to the intensity of the stimulus. So the more intense the stimulus, the faster the response will be. So if the hot plate is really hot, you're going to move your hand much quicker than if it was only a little bit warm. When listing the different types of receptors, sometimes we categorize them in different ways. Receptors are commonly classified according to the type of energy to which they respond. So in your booklet, you've got a table there to indicate the different types of stimulus, sense organs, sensory receptors, and their function. So what we're going to do is go through each of our five senses and look at the stimulus that each sense detects, the sense organ, the receptors, and their function. So let's start off with the stimulus of light. The sense organ that detects light is our eye. And within our eye, we have photoreceptors. And these photoreceptors are divided into rods and cones that are found in the retina of the eye, which is the very back layer of our eye. And we'll be spending time looking at what the retina does and what the rods and cones do a little bit later in the topic. The function of the photoreceptors is to detect three things being light, color, and movement. The next stimulus we're going to look at is sound. The sense organ to detect sound is our ears. And the type of receptors that are found in our ears are called mechanoreceptors. So these are tiny hair cells in a part of our ear called the organ of corti. And what they do is they detect the sound waves. So think about mechano meaning movement. So sound waves are vibrations in the air. So the hair cells in the organ of corti detect those vibrations. Next, we have a, a chemical stimulus, which is detected by the tongue. And the type of sensory receptors detected or that are found in our taste buds are called chemoreceptors. And their job is to dissolve, to, to, oh, sorry, to detect the dissolved molecules that are found in our food. Next, we have the, another chemical stimulus, which this time is smell. So our nose is used to detect uh, this stimulus, again, our sensory receptors are also chemoreceptors, but this time they're obviously found in our nasal passage rather than our taste buds. And their job is to detect different molecules in the air and send messages to our brain in order to interpret those molecules as a smell. The last type of stimulus is pressure, and the sense organ that detects this is our skin. The sensory receptors, again, are mechanoreceptors, but this time they do a little bit of a different job where they detect pressure. So whenever our skin is touched in any way, the mechanoreceptors detect it and send the message to the brain. 
The reaction of an organism or the tissues within an organism to a stimulus is termed the response. The central nervous system, that is the brain and the spinal cord, triggers this response. Receptors in the sense organs are connected to the central nervous system by means of nerves. For example, photoreceptors in the eye connect to the brain via the optic nerve. Receptors in the sense organ change the stimuli received into electrochemical signals called nerve impulses. These impulses travel along the nerves, which act as messengers, transmitting the electrochemical message from the receptors to the central nervous system where they are processed and interpreted and then a suitable response is initiated. The central nervous system then sends more impulses along different nerves to effector organs to carry out the response. Effectors are usually muscles or glands, and in the example of touching a hot plate, the withdrawal of the hand is a response triggered by the central nervous system. Nerve impulses are sent along nerves to the muscles of the arms, which are the effectors, causing them to contract and withdraw the hand from the heat, which is our response. Another example is the response to a loud knock at the door, which is a stimulus, which causes you to look up, which is your response. In this case, the brain will interpret the information and send messages to the muscles of your neck and eyes in order to trigger that particular response. The brain and spinal cord interpret and make sense of the messages they receive, either by taking into account past experience or as an inherited reflex. Some examples of reflexes are blinking your eye when something moves towards them rapidly or unexpectedly, and jerking away from the source of pain, such as the example we looked at before when you touch something that's really hot. The widening of our pupils when we enter a dark room is also another reflex action. We don't have to send a message consciously to our brain to say, okay, I've walked into a dark room, you need, I need my pupils to dilate. Your body automatically does that in order to adjust the amount of light entering our eye. A typical example of a response in terms of past experiences, however, is when your mouth begins to water at the smell of baking bread or biscuits. So lovely Homer there, whenever he smells donuts, that's his automatic reaction is his mouth begins watering and he's salivating. So a stimulus in the form of information being received by receptors is processed by the brain and spinal cord and a message is sent via nerves or messages to the effectors where a response is brought about. The result of this pathway is what we term animal behavior. Now, that brings us to the end of this video. This is just a real, we've covered two dot points, but at the same time, it also introduces us to quite a few things we'll be looking at in much more detail as we move through the rest of this topic. And this brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.